Greetings to all of you. This is Rich Norton with RMS, sales training and inspiration. Say it with me, inspiration. That's what we're here to do is to inspire you, to motivate you, and to teach you how to be a top sales performer, not only in our industry. Many people have been reaching out to me and telling me, which I'm very thankful for, that this has helped them to have success in their field of selling also. So that's great. It's great to hear because the things that we teach apply to all selling, whether it's retail, whether it's direct sales, whether it's what we do in the credit card processing industry, whether it's insurance uh, sales, whatever it is, when it involves dealing with people, talking with people, engaging with people, all these things that we teach are going to help you in order to have success in the field of selling. So that's my goal and that's what I'm excited about being able to do is to teach people to reach their full potential when it comes to the selling field. Really in life in general because a lot of the things that we're teaching really evolved around life, everyday living, communicating with other people, having encounters with other people, relationships, everyday living, that's what it all boils down to. So what's the goal? We want you to have success in everything, every endeavor of your life. Not only do we want you to be the best and to be number one, we want you to be number one in your relationships as a spouse if you're married or if you have children, grandchildren, your friends, be number one in every phase of your life, in your ministries, every part, your business, your career, especially in the field of selling. So that's my desire, is to teach you and to help you to have true, true success. Do I have all the answers? No, I don't. Am I under construction? Yes, I certainly am. Do I have a lot of background? No question about it. When you really think about it, selling direct. This is why i got to start writing books now, because all the things that I have learned, when you really think about this, 18 years old, selling encyclopedias door to door, doing that industry for 20 years, knocking on thousands of doors all throughout the country, all throughout the world, selling in Germany, selling on military bases, selling and having success, teaching people how to do that, and coming into this industry being the top performer in the entire country. So yes, there's a lot of wisdom, a lot of experience, a lot of success, lots of failure, as we've talked about. I've gotten more no's than anybody in the history of the company probably in the history of this industry. I've gotten more failure than pretty much anybody and everyone. So the failure that I have, the things that I've learned, is all part of helping you to become successful. So I have a passion for that. I want to teach you to become the best that you could possibly be. I do all kinds of training classes as soon as I'm done with these shows. I'm going to get ready to do a Zoom training class, which I've been doing with a group of people for several months now, and we're seeing the results. We're seeing success, and it's fantastic. I love knowing that I'm part of helping people to become successful. It's a great thing. It's a positive thing. It's an exciting thing, and that's what I'm here to do. So that's why we do the shows. As a matter of fact, we are finishing up our shows one-on-one -on -one training with Rich Norton. We've already done 18 of them. This is episode 19. We're going to finish this up. If we need to do 20, I'd like to do 20, so we might do some review, and we'll have a 20. That should be, I should make videos of that. Uh, I should put them into DVDs, sell them. Uh, that'd be great, but I'm providing this for you at no cost for your success. It is a series taking you from beginning all the way to the end, teaching you the presentation, the mindset, every phase of the industry from the beginning all the way down to the end, giving you the necessary tools to have success in our industry. Everything I'm teaching you 
is not all, maybe it is some old school, but it's exactly what I do to this day, and I'm still writing over 300 merchants per year, still doing that, and my goal is to teach you how to have great success. So one-on-one -on -one training, next episode, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to take a short break, break out your notebooks, we're going to finish up, We'll do some reviewing, and we will take you to the next level. I hope you're excited, as excited as I am. Let's take a short break, and I'll be right back. Hey, everybody, you have Rich Norton here from Retriever Merchant Solutions. Do you consider yourself a winner? Do you consider yourself a champion? Do you consider yourself the best? Are you that type of person that likes to strive for the best? You like being number one, you're competitive, you like being in a positive environment where you can go as far as you want to go? Well, that's what we have at Retriever Merchant Solutions, an opportunity where you can be big as you want to be. You can grow as high as you want to go, you can go as far as you want to go, that's the opportunity that we have here with RMS. So if you feel that you're that type of person, you like meeting people, you're not afraid of rejection, you understand that the key to success is having a right attitude and going to work and never looking back and never giving up and making a commitment to do this 1,000%, that's gonna give you success. So if I just described you I want you to give me a call. Rich Norton, 904-434-4635. You're gonna see the email right at the bottom of the screen. We will teach you this business. You may say, well, I've never done that type of business. We will teach you, we will train you, we will give you all the necessary tools on what it takes to become successful, and then we can celebrate your success and congratulate you for being a winner with RMS. I look forward to that. Give me a call. All right, I'm glad to be back with you. I'm winding this down, and we're going to finish this up. And one of the things that we had talked about before was reading statements. Now, I'm not going to get into a lot of that. Uh, for those of you that are new and you're just starting out in the industry or you fully don't understand reading merchant statements, that's fine. We have taught you a presentation where you'll be able to walk into a business, get to know them, and not even look at their statement at all do some comparison pricing based on the overall effective rate. You will find that you will be able to do, if you're presenting traditional processing all the way through, you are going to be able to present the merchant without looking at a statement. How awesome is that? So you're saying, Rich, you mean to tell me I don't have to read a statement, get a statement from every merchant? Yes, I'm telling you that. I think about when I first started in the industry, that's what we did. The first thing was get a statement, grab their statement. You can't pitch them without a statement. You can't present them without a statement. Dissect the statement. And they taught us how to do that, how to find out what their rate was and how to look for, what to look for. Do some multi, have your little calculator out, you know, have everything written out. Uh, we were presenting pin debit. If they didn't have pin debit, we presented the uh, savings that they would get with pin debit, talk about their monthly fees, find out the equipment. Everything was there and we had to dissect every statement. So learning how to read statements, that was a necessity, especially when I first started out in the industry. Well, the good part is, now it's not. It's nice to know them. In fact, I will encourage you to watch previous episodes. I believe I have about eight shows breaking down how to understand and how to read merchant statements. If you've not watched those shows, watch them. They will be very beneficial to you because I've broken down many different statements from different merchant companies that you will find very informative and very educational. So when you do run across different statements, you'll know exactly what to look for. So if a merchant does present you with a statement and they say, hey, here's my statement, what are you going to save me? 
it is nice to know that you will be able to understand and break down those statements. So work on that, get to know that, start looking at different statements, start breaking them down, get together with your trainer, your immediate supervisor, get together with somebody else. Role playing really plays an important part in our industry. That's a very, very important part. Practice that, rehearse, go through the presentation, go through statements, send them to me, I'm going to help you. I've done this many times, helped many representatives, close merchants. I said, just send me over the statement and I'm going to break it down with you. And then I point out all the different things and like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yes, that definitely makes sense. All right, get the merchant on the phone and I'll help close the merchant finding out exactly where they're at, write the merchant up, or without even getting them on the phone, what I will do is I will actually tell you exactly what to do with that merchant. So very, very important. So the things that are very necessary when you're breaking down a statement, because that's what we're doing right now, when we're covering like overall effective rate, and that's the beauty part about our presentation, we can present to a merchant. We can say, based on what you're doing per month, you know, we've got a nice rapport going on with the merchant, and we could say, in a typical month, what do you find that you're typically doing on an average month. Now I know there's no such thing as a typical month, but what would you say average, what do you think you're doing in credit card, debit card processing? They're gonna throw out a number. Yeah, we're doing about 20,000. As you've gotten to know different types of businesses, you will get to know what their average ticket is. If you're not sure, ask the merchant. You can say, or assume, you can say, Based on the type of business that you're in right now, through my experience, let's use an auto shop for example, your average ticket is about 150, 200, does that sound pretty accurate? I know you have higher tickets, some smaller, but my experience, does that sound pretty accurate? Yes it does. So you're doing about 20,000 a month, your average ticket's about 150 to 200, my experience with the merchant service company that you're with right now, your fees are in the $600, $650 range. Does that sound pretty accurate? Yes, it does. Now we've got something to compare it to. Now if you go to, please do this because I'm providing this at no cost. Take advantage of the resources if you don't you are being foolish. Take advantage of them. That's what they're there for. I have about 18 different merchant statements of different examples of merchants that you can show. This is how you can explain to a merchant where they would be with us based on these statements. Because the bottom line is, what is the bottom line? The only thing you have to worry about is what is the overall effective rate. So you got a number and you can explain. You talked a little bit about interchange, that's the cost. We're adding a quarter of a percent, eight cents per swipe. Let me give you an example of how that works because the bottom line is, what is the bottom line? Here, for example, is a merchant statement and you got it in your book, you have it in your iPad or on your laptop. It's all there for the taking. Have them, make sure you got it. Here's a merchant right here. They did 19,000. Here's what their fee was for the month, 320. Do you feel that I've got this merchant's attention? They're paying over 600. I'm showing a statement for 300 and something. Here's another one. They did 15,000. Total fees were 194. That's all I got to show. Now I've got their attention, and now I'm going to break into the equipment and write the merchant up. Didn't have to look at a statement, I showed overall effective rate. Now in our training manual, this is very important, if you look on page 26, we have what they call five factors of pricing. And what we've done is we broke it down into different areas from the zero to forty dollars, 
what their all-in processing percentage would be. And we broke them down all the way up to $500 plus. It's important that you get this because we don't want anybody misrepresenting. We've had people do this in the past where they will talk to a merchant and then they'll say, oh, you're a coffee shop and you paid you did 10 grand and you paid 600. Well, you're going to only pay 150 with us. That's never going to happen, especially with their average ticket at $10. So it's important that you understand the lower the average ticket is, the higher the percentage all in is going to be. The higher the percentage, the lower it's going to be. Now you may ask, Rich, I don't understand. Tell me why. Here's why. When you look at interchange, and this is available to the public for anybody to look up, you will see hundreds of different types of interchanges from debit cards, rewards cards, regulated debit cards. If you don't know what that is, watch some previous shows, especially in this series that we're doing. Rewards cards, corporate cards, all of them have a percentage including a transaction fee. That's what makes the difference there. Not the percentage, but the transaction fee, especially when that ticket is lower. For example, if you have a 1% or a 1.5% and 15 cent transaction fee, based on a $10 ticket, 15 cents automatically is 1.5%, automatically. So you've already added that, you've added the percentage, and before you know it, when you add the assessments, the processing fee, the transaction fee, you automatically know now that they're going to be in the 3% range. This is why Square changed their rate. They were originally at 2.75, but they changed it. Why did they change it? 2.6 and 10 cents. The reason being, on a $10 average ticket, Square was losing money. On coffee shops, all the other different places, they were losing money. So what did they do? They changed it to 2.6, 10 cents, which made a $10 average ticket 3.6% all in. So that's what made the difference was that transaction fee. So I hope that is resonating and it makes sense to all of you. So keep that in mind. For example, if you take a, just that for example, 1%, 15 cents that we just talked about. You add the assessments, we're at 1.14%, 15 cents. You add the 0.25, now we're at 1.39 plus 15 cents. You add the 8 cents, now we're at 1.39 plus 20 cents. Ten dollar ticket, 23 cents. You didn't think you'd have to do all this math, right? But it does apply to our business. 2.3 percent, you add the 1.39, which is 1.4. Now they're at like 3 point something percent, 3.6, 3.7 percent on a ten dollar ticket. So there's no way that you can tell a merchant, I'm going to get you under two percent all in on $10 tickets. They are going to be typically 3%, maybe a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower. They may go up to 3.2, 3.3, somewhere in that range, but they're not going to be in the 1.5%. Now let's take, for example, like a regulated debit card. Now I'll talk a little bit about that. The interchange rate on that is 0.05% plus 22 cents. Now the 22 cents for an average ticket of $10, that doesn't help that kind of merchant because now they're at 2.2%, right? You add all the other fees, they're still going to be in the 3% range. But you take 0.05% and 22 cents and you put that on a $1,000 ticket, this merchant is paying like a tenth of a percent on the card. You can add 0.25, which makes it 0.30. You can add the 8 cents, you can add the 0.14. So they could be at 0.49% and 28 or 30 cents. 
So that means at 0.49%, that's half a percent. And the 30 cents doesn't make a big difference at all on a $1,000 ticket. So the higher that average ticket goes, the transaction fee really doesn't make much a difference at all. That's why if I run across a merchant and they're a convenience store or a hot dog stand, I'm going to keep that transaction fee as low as I possibly can. I may put them at 0.25 and 5 cents because those 3 cents are going to make a little bit of difference. Now, if I get a merchant that has a higher ticket and they're at uh, 8 cents, doesn't make a difference. 10 cents, I can do 0.25. 15 cents really doesn't make it much difference so that's why all in processing really depends on what the average ticket is so to back up a little bit so you comprehend so you fully get this and you fully understand this the interchange all of them have transaction fees attached to them some will be 1% 1 1.2 15 cents 0.8 10 cents, 2.1, uh, 15 cents, 2.79, 10 cents. All of them have that. That's why the overall effective rate makes a difference. So let's break this down, and you will see on page 26, five factors of pricing. So when you got from zero to $40, I'm gonna say five to $10 will be overall 3% or higher. It's going to be very difficult to get them under that 3% level because right here we have all-in processing 225 to 2.75%. I never want to over exaggerate. I don't want to misrepresent about rates. I don't want merchants to get their statement from us and say, wait a second, you didn't tell me this. This is different from what you've told me. That's why it's important to have this knowledge and to fully understand this. And that's why when you're giving statements and you're showing statements that you fully understand and comprehend that and you're not misrepresenting or making exaggerated claims. So zero to forty dollars. 2.25, it says 2.75, I'm going to say 3%, maybe even higher than that. When you get a merchant that's 50 to $100, 1.8 to 2.3. So it's like a half a percent difference there. And then you got, on all of these, 125 to 200, 1.6 to 2.10. Now, if a merchant is doing a lot of PIN debit, as that average ticket is higher, huge difference. We can show you statements that our merchants are doing 65 to 75 percent pin debit with average tickets of two to three hundred to four hundred to five hundred and they will actually be paying under one percent. You know, we actually have merchants like that. So that makes a difference right there. 125 to 200, 1.6, 2.10 is probably on the higher end. These are based on retail merchants, so keep that in mind. 250 to 400, 1.25 to 1.75. If they're 500 plus, we can have them at 1.15 to 1.65. I'm not talking about one rate. I'm talking about all in, all effective rate is what that rate's going to be. So the bottom line is, is what is their bottom line. Now we're going to take a short break here in a minute, but there's some parameters that will affect that pricing. How much of the percentage is American Express? American Express's rate, interchange rate, is higher as the average ticket goes up. So they can go 1.6 to like 3 point something percent if that average ticket is higher. Why do they do that? Because they make more money. Uh, ratio of card present versus manual entry. If you have a merchant and they are a flower shop, that's why I have statements in that book that has flower shops. They're manually keying in cards. Interchange rate will be a little bit higher. The current ratio of pin debit, we talked about that, the Durban Act regulated debit pricing 
and what type of area that you're in. You might be in an area that's super nice, using a lot of rewards cards, American Express cards, or you might be in an area where they're using a lot of debit cards. So that makes a big difference. Study this, get this down. I hope this helps. I know it helps because I'm teaching you things most representatives do not know about. So let's take a short break. We're going to close the show, and I'll be right back. Hello, everybody. Rich Norton here from RMS Sales Training and Inspiration. I want to thank you all for tuning into our shows. Most of our shows are recorded here live at Hands and Feet Foundation, which is a ministry that I serve in, and I'm very, very blessed to serve into this ministry. My wife and I come out here. She's out here every Thursday or Tuesday. She brings music out to everybody, and I come out usually with her on Saturdays, and we have church with everybody that comes out here. And we've been very fortunate, very blessed to come out here and serve in this ministry. This is a ministry that's near and dear to our hearts. We have a passion and we have a heart for the lost. We have a passion and a heart for people that are down and out. And the majority of the people that come here are homeless, uh, been through some very difficult times, whether it's bad choices on their own or whether it's just circumstances. We just love on them and we help them get off the streets and we help them get into rehab for some people that are wanting to get uh, clean. Uh, we send them to different places. So there's just wonderful things that are happening here at Hands and Feet Foundation. So if you'd like to learn more, you can go to handsandfeetfoundation.org. You can look them up on Facebook, Hands and Feet West Side, or you can come out and visit 7478 103rd Street, Jacksonville, Florida. If you'd like to come out and visit, or you'd like to give a donation, or you just like to come out and help serve, Come and join us. It'd be fantastic to see you. You'll see me in my shorts and my t-shirt and my guitar. I'm just having a great day. So we'd love for you to come out here as well. Thank you. All right, my friends, glad to share this information with you. And I'm glad that you're learning this and you're studying this and you're getting this down. So keep that in mind. All right, you don't want to get all caught up in this, but it's important to understand this. You don't have to break all this down for the merchant. You don't have to over explain because what ends up happening, it becomes overwhelming. If it becomes overwhelming, it sounds like a big deal. If it sounds like a big deal, then the merchant's going to give you statements like, this sounds great, I need to think about it. Yeah, this sounds like a big deal. I don't make a decision like this, especially something major like this. You don't want to go down that road, down that road. So keep that simple when you're explaining it. I'm going to encourage you, if you haven't done this already, presentation book, whether you're showing it through a iPad, your book, I'm old school, I got a book printed out, I got the sleeves and I put everything in there, and I got a ton of merchant statements in there, and they go a long way when you're presenting traditional processing. Because how nice is it for, to be able to do a comparison based on where they're at and where other merchants like them being with us where they're at with us. That goes a long way. That's going to captivate their attention. That's going to make a big difference. But please understand, all these things make a difference. Average ticket is so important. So get that down. Work on it. Make sure you understand all of that. If you have any questions, reach out to me. Reach out to your trainer. Reach out to people that have been doing this for a while. Comparison, average ticket, are they keying the cards in, what type of cards they're getting. It's important that you understand that. If you have a business to business and you got a merchant that's dealing with mostly corporate cards, that interchange rate is going to be a little bit higher. So understand that. Keep that in mind. Very, very important. I think a motorboat just went by me. So great time. We're out here on the beach. We're having fun. We're making it happen. It is a fantastic time. So I'm going to do one more show, and we're going to have a 20-part series one-on-one -on -one training with Rich Norton. The next show, because we've covered everything, will be just a review to kind of walk you through some things to make sure you understand. I'm very glad, very excited to share all this with you. 
understand that every day you wake up in the morning is an incredible gift. Cherish that gift. It's a gift from God. What you do with that gift is your gift back to God. Make it an awesome one, and I'll see you next time on RMS Sales Training and Inspiration.